The HK P7 is the holy grail of hipster handguns. It is long since discontinued, which makes it rare and expensive, and it has a novel method of gas delay blowback operation, which you can explain in exhaustive detail to anyone unlucky enough to be in the same room as you. But I don't have one of those because I can't afford one of those. Instead, I have the second best thing. Actually, I have the third best thing, because the second best thing would be a Steyr GB, which is another discontinued gas-delayed blowback hipster handgun. I have a Heritage Stealth C1010. This is very nearly an HKP7 clone made by Heritage Manufacturing, the same company that makes the Rough Rider series of single-action revolvers. I've also got a Wilson Combat ADP, which is the same gun, but made a few years later by Wilson Combat to significantly higher quality standards. Let's take a look at these things. This pistol was designed by South African firearms designer Alex Duplessis in the very early 90s and originally manufactured by the South African company Aserma as the ADP, named for Alex Duplessis' initials. The ADP was first introduced to the United States in the mid-90s by Heritage Manufacturing as the Stealth. Heritage was still a young company at the time. They got their start in 1992, making the same Rough Rider they're known for today. So expanding into a polymer-framed carry gun probably didn't seem as out of character then as it would if they made one now. The Stealth is more or less a polymer-framed HKP7 knockoff. It uses the same ghastly blowback action as a P7, but doesn't attempt to clone the squeeze cocker system that handgun hipsters like to tell apocryphal stories about. These guns have a recoil spring around a fixed barrel similar to a straight blowback system, but the gas delay system means the gun can operate safely without having an enormously heavy slide and stiff recoil spring. Gas is tapped off of the barrel just in front of where the case mouth sits, so basically in the chamber before the rifling grooves start. After the shot is fired and before the round exits the barrel, there is gas pressure pushing against the piston that rides below the barrel and is attached to the front of the slide. The pressure on the piston doesn't exactly keep the gun locked up in battery so much as it just slows the slide down enough to keep things safe. Hence why this isn't a locked breech gun or a gas operated gun, but rather a delayed blowback gun. The P7 must have been popular in South Africa because gas delay blowback is what drives the much more well-known Vector CP1, which was also designed and produced in South Africa in the 90s. The CP1 looks much more modern than the Stealth, but that's just an illusion. It's basically a sci-fi super soaker shell clamped around single action only hammer fired lockwork. Instead of the HKP7 squeeze cocker safety, the Stealth has a manual safety behind the trigger guard and above the magazine release button. The safety is ambidextrous but has no clean detent in either position, it just kind of slides around. The placement of the safety is awkward to actuate if you have long fingers, especially on the draw or from a firing grip. The Stealth has last shot hold open but no manual slide release. The outer contours of the gun are very sleek due to the lack of controls and the low profile safety. These guns were clearly meant for concealed carry. The overall size is a bit smaller than a Glock 19 in all dimensions. The grip is shorter, the slides are slimmer, and the overall length is shorter despite having the same barrel length. These guns are single action only and striker fired like the P7. And like the P7, the back end of the striker protrudes from the back of the slide when the gun is cocked, although a P7 isn't cocked until you squeeze the lever at the front of the grip. The ADP has a surprisingly good trigger. It's not a fully pre-cocked striker, so the trigger pull is a bit long, but it's smooth and not too heavy. The trigger and fixed barrel should make these guns quite accurate, and indeed they seem to be. The model numbers of the Stealth indicate the caliber and the slide finish. The C1000 is a 9mm with an all stainless slide finish. The 1010 I have is in 9mm with a shitty black engine paint looking finish on the slide, with the stainless finish on just the flats. It's kind of like the SIG Equinox finish, only much worse, and yet somehow better, since at least they didn't use Comic Sans. The Old West scroll font isn't much better. I guess it's on brand for Heritage, but it looks weird as hell on this gun. There was also the C2000, aka the Stealth Shadow, which has an all-black finish. The Stealth was also produced in 40 Smith & Wesson, indicated by model numbers starting with 4. So the C4000 is stainless, C4010 is two-tone, and C4200 is the shadow variant. Magazine capacity of the Stealth is 10 rounds in both the 9mm and 40 Smith & Wesson models. There was also a 45 version planned, kind of. We'll get to that later. I first saw the C1010 super cheap on a late night gun broker cruise and had no idea what it was, so I bought it. After paying shipping and the FFL transfer fee, the cost nearly doubled, but that still makes it one of my less costly mistakes. By the time the pistol arrived, I'd done my research and found out what an ignominious reputation the gun had. 
The Stealth was known for poor reliability, terrible build quality, and for occasionally launching the slide rearward into the face of the shooter. Nice. I've shot mine sparingly, as you can imagine. Gotta protect my moneymaker. Man, this thing scares the shit out of me. The Stealth shoots fine, really. Gas delayed blowback doesn't get used a lot because it's kind of snake oil. It doesn't shoot appreciably softer than Browning short recoil guns, and the theoretical benefits of a fixed barrel are sort of offset by the fact that gas delay guns generate a lot of heat down to the dust cover, which is where your support hand thumb goes and where you index your trigger finger when not firing. HK's solution in later models of the P7 was to put a plastic shield over the metal frame so you could shoot the P7 more without men in blacking your fingerprints off. The Stealth doesn't have that problem because the frame is polymer. It gets warm, but slower than a P7, and it isn't as burny as metal. The downside is that the heat can cause the polymer frame to warp, which is given by some as a possible reason for the gun's reputation for imperfect reliability. As for the slide launching problem, that could just be a matter of improper reassembly. Like most guns with fixed barrels, the Stealth disassembles weirdly. You have to retract the slide and pinch these two little takedown buttons in, then lift the slide off the frame rails and pull it off the front of the gun. Reassembly is in reverse, but it's tricky to get it all to line up while also holding down these two microscopic little fucking nubs and holding the slide back against spring pressure. I don't think it's possible to put the gun back together in a way that doesn't engage the frame rails and still lets you get around into battery, so I tend to believe the slide launching thing is an exaggerated claim. Perhaps it's a case of bad materials, or an issue with the 40 caliber guns glock nading on overpressure FUD hand loads, or maybe these striker assemblies were blowing out the back of the slides instead, and history recorded that with a little artistic flourish. You will absolutely enjoy shooting a P7 more than a Stealth. It's more comfortable and better made, but if it shoots any better, it's really just because of the extra weight of the metal frame. The P7 is one of the most grossly overrated handguns of all time. It's a really nice pistol, but it's overrated. The Wilson Combat version of the gun was produced starting in 2006 and is much better than the Stealth. Technically, this is the ADP Mark II. Some of the differences between these two guns are generational since the Mark II was a more mature design, and some differences are down to quality and cost. I imagine Wilson Combat was happy to spend more money making the ADP because they knew people would pay more for a Wilson Combat gun than for a Heritage. Adjusted for inflation, these guns cost about 900 bucks new. I don't know what the stealth cost in the late 90s, but not that much. The most immediately noticeable difference is in the grip frame. The Wilson gun has a much slimmer grip with finger grooves. It's significantly more comfortable and doesn't have hot spots at the heel of the grip and in the beaver tail. The whole upper is different as well. The ADP has a machine slide instead of investment cast. It's much slimmer and has sharper serrations as well as a squared off profile. It's hard to get good purchase on the slide of the Stealth, but it's not an issue on the Wilson Combat. The newer gun also has a redesigned internal extractor, a new striker assembly design, and a breech block pressed into the slide instead of being all one piece. The magazines are ever so slightly different between the guns. The original Stealth magazines were made by Mechgar. The ADP mags aren't marked as Mechgar, but they look almost identical, except they have slightly shorter feed lips. I had some feeding issues trying to use the Stealth Mag in the Wilson Combat, but not the other way around. That didn't look right to me. This is only happening with the uh, Mechgar produced mag for the original pistol. The sights on the Stealth are terrible, but on the Wilson Combat, they're actually pretty good. The Wilson Combat has three dot tritium night sights. They are also dovetailed in the front and the back, rather than the machined in front on the Stealth. The dovetail is also way bigger on the rear, and the sight isn't made out of plastic, so it's not prone to falling out of the gun or drifting itself randomly. Another slight improvement to the design is that the firing pin does not protrude from the rear of the slide when cocked anymore. On the Wilson Combat ADP, the striker does not protrude from the rear of the slide until you begin to pull the trigger and you start taking up that slack in the striker. I imagine that if you dropped the Heritage Stealth on the rear of the slide, you would definitely destroy the striker and possibly cause an out-of-battery detonation. The last little change is that the Wilson Combat ADP does not have a magazine safety, unlike the Stealth. That also means the magazines drop free on the ADP when ejected. The Wilson Combat does Alex Duplessis' design justice in a way that the Heritage Stealth does not. 
The ADP is a much nicer gun. The changes to the slide and grip frame make it much more comfortable to shoot and handle, and it helps that I'm not afraid of taking a high-velocity striker assembly to the eye so I can actually focus on shooting. Wilson Combat just built this design better than Heritage did. Or maybe they didn't. Information about these guns is pretty sparse on the English language internet, and there always seems to be some confusion about where these guns were actually made and when. Most sources suggest that these guns were always manufactured in South Africa, initially by the Aserma company and later by a company called Truvelo, and were just imported by Heritage and then Wilson Combat. In the latter half of the 90s, it was also supposedly produced in Italy by Tanfolio as the P25. There are a few problems with this version of history. Neither of my pistols is marked in any way to indicate that they were manufactured in South Africa. Every other imported firearm I own is marked with the country of manufacture and the name of the importer. For example, this Taurus PT-908 marked as being made in Brazil by Taurus Manufacturing and also marked with Taurus International, the importer in Miami, Florida. Or all of my Interarms era Star pistols, which have the markings from Star in Ibar, Spain and Interarms in Alexandria, Virginia. Maybe that's not technically a legal requirement for an imported firearm, or maybe because these guns weren't produced and then later exported, but rather built specifically for a US contract, they didn't have to be marked as coming from South Africa. Maybe this has more to do with South African law than United States law, or maybe it has more to do with the stigma of weapons being imported from freshly post-apartheid South Africa during the American assault weapons ban, no less. My other theory was that the frames were made in South Africa and the uppers were built by whatever company happened to be importing them at the time. The evidence for this theory is a random website from a dusty corner of the internet that shows a Tanfolio P25 with a clear Made in Italy mark on the slide. This one is obviously a Mark I ADP based on the frame design, but the slide is way different than the Heritage Stealth slide. There is also a picture out there of a Mark II version of the Tanfolio P25 that seems to have an identical frame to the Wilson Combat Gun, but some subtle differences to the slide. It stands to reason that the Truvelo company in Africa could have injection molded the frames under contract for first Heritage and later Wilson Combat and probably even Tanfolio. Heritage would certainly have been able to make the uppers in-house. They should have been well able to make or source investment castings for the slides. The Rough Rider series uses a cast frame to my knowledge. Wilson Combat likewise should have been able to machine slide since they were already making handguns in-house. All the rest of it, barrels, springs, pins, they could make or buy in the United States. The differences in build quality and method between these two upper assemblies is so different I just can't believe they were made by the same company. The frame redesign is relatively minor all things considered, just a new mold with finger grooves and less bulk. But the slides are worlds apart. I don't believe these guns were entirely manufactured in South Africa. The fly in that particular ointment is that I know of several American handguns that used frames sourced in Europe. The SIG SP2340 has a frame made in Switzerland and an upper made in Exeter, New Hampshire. The Magnum Research MR9 has a frame made by Walther in Germany and an upper made by Magnum Research in Minnesota. All of these clearly marked. So what actually happened? I think we need to rely on that classic axiom of the internet. Simply by posting this video full of wrong information, I will summon a subject matter expert to the comment section to tell us everything we need to know about American import laws and the history of the ADP. If we can't conjure up some facts that easily, maybe Ian McCollum needs to take another trip to South Africa to see if he can talk to Alex Duplessis directly. There was a short-lived attempt to make the ADP in 45 caliber, firing a special shortened version of the 45 ACP cartridge called the 45 ADP. This was years before Glock invented the 45 gap, and I can't think of a more appropriate subject for a forgotten weapons video. If you want that to happen, ask Ian. I'm just kidding, please do not do that. Thank you for watching, guys. If you like this channel, please subscribe and consider supporting me directly via Subscribestar, link in the video description. See you guys next time.